Hey, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit today about, uh, let's see, maybe I should come back around this from the back end. Uh, too many people, in my opinion, think of preparedness and survival from a very negative standpoint. Uh, from the standpoint of having nothing or trying to make do with the very least or minimal that they can. I think that's a huge mistake. Uh, as things get bad, you can mitigate that bad by being prepared, of course. That's what we always talk about. If things get really bad, you can mitigate that by being very prepared. Um, that, well, wait, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait just a second. Put it up here. <clears throat> wait just a second before I, I make the point here. <clears throat> a lot of people uh, have left comments. Well, yeah, maybe not a lot, but some people in the past have left comments and even reviews about my books saying, well, yeah, but we don't all have you know, whatever, uh, all the money in the world, or a big, you know, this or a big that. Those people are coming, from, I, I don't think that those people can be helped because they are coming from a negative point of view, and they just resent anybody uh, that tells them that things can be better. They would rather wallow in their own failure or, <clears throat> or, uh, or negativity than try to do anything about it, okay? By the way, the noise in the background, in case you heard it, we're still a silver dollar city, and behind me, uh, what is that ride they call it? I don't ride rides, but uh, what is it? Time travel, yeah, the, uh, Kelly and, and Aiden love it. <laughs> You'll never get me on it. <clears throat> but one of the most important things you can do uh, to get ready to prepare is to make money or to have the money and usually in order to have the money you have to make the money right very few of us just just woke up and and uh, found ourselves being raised by the Rockefellers. <clears throat> so if you want it you got to make it well the thing is there's a million ways to make it i know i've said it before that i can't walk down the steps in the morning without thinking about a, a new way to make money and that's not me acting like i'm all that I'm not super brilliant, it's just that if you have a mind that kind of works like that, uh, that's those are the kinds of things that come to you. And I've had a number of business, so many businesses throughout the years, uh, <clears throat> some more successful than others. And, uh, and usually I just went on to something else because my interests changed. But almost everything that you put your mind to, you can make a good living out of if you apply yourself to it. I want to tell you a story about my... My uh, nephew, uh, you'll see how this applies. My nephew came over yesterday before we left town to borrow a ladder. You know, I have ladders because I have uh, a Christmas light uh, business. <clears throat> and so he's, uh, he asked if he could borrow a ladder because he needed it for, to paint something out at uh, the Ren Fest, the Renaissance Festival out in Kansas City. It's actually out in Bonner Springs, west of Kansas City. It's a big, big Ren Fest. It's not the biggest in the, in the country by any means. But I, of course, said yes. And when he came over, uh, I, I asked him what, you know, what he was doing. Well, he said that he had, he had bought, he and his mom, my sister, uh, had bought a permanent structure out at the Renaissance Festival. Uh, and he told me what he got it for. I'll tell you in a minute. But I want to tell you how he, and he, they, he needed to paint it. That's why he needed the ladder. I want to tell you how they got started. Okay. Years and years ago, I was out doing something, and uh, and I was someplace, I forget where, and, uh, you know, it's one of these restaurants or someplace where they have bulletin boards uh, up there of, uh, you know, upcoming events and bands, things like that. And I, I, I noticed one that said, um, I don't know, apply or acts or something like that at the Renaissance Festival. <clears throat> My niece at the time was kind of starting to get into that. She really kind of enjoyed that. So I, I took it and I gave it to her and, and she kind of looked into it. Well, she got into, you know, playing things at Renfest 
and uh, and then I guess my nephew got into it. Uh, after they were in it for a few years, they started running shows and managing and doing all sorts of things. And then all of a sudden, I hear that they're, well, they I don't hear it, but they tell me, you know, hey, we're going down to the one in uh, Oklahoma, and we're going to the one in Arkansas, and we're going to the other one down in central Missouri. And then they're going down to the one in Texas. I guess the, the huge one is down outside of Houston somewhere. <clears throat> and these things are fun. I don't go to them, but I, I, I can understand these rent fests are, are a lot of fun. It's not everybody's thing, but it, it's a lot of people's thing, right? And when people go to those things, they spend a lot of money. Well, my niece and nephew got to the point to where they were organizing shows and putting on shows, and they were starting to make good money. Um, my nephew started making bone jewelry. He's, he's into a big Viking thing. You know, he plays a Viking at all these things, and he carves runes and, and uh, uh, <clears throat> bone jewelry and, and everything like this. He just sells it like mad and makes bunches of, bun, uh, of, of money. And, and my niece does the same thing through other avenues. Well, these, these kids just starting off doing stuff that they thought was fun are all of a sudden traveling all over the country. And they're, they're I mean, it, it's amazing. I don't know everything that they do, but uh, whenever they come by to visit, I just sit and listen, and I'm just astounded. <clears throat> my sister got into it. My sister <clears throat> went to law school years and years ago, never practiced law, because the business that she started with our mother while she was in law school became so big by the time she got out of law school. I won't mention what kind of business it was. Uh, <clears throat> got so big that it was a huge business, and she never practiced it at that law. Well, she now has, and she's retired, she's kind of come into this thing in the Renaissance Festival uh, stuff with my niece and nephew, her son and daughter. Now they've just signed a big thing with the, the big show down in Texas, uh, and it looks like they're looking at, just from that show, six figures for a couple of months on stuff that they make and sell. Now, these are people doing things that they love, traveling around the country, uh, living a great life, right, and making unbelievable money. Here's my point. <clears throat> Every day I hear from people, or I run into people, or I read a comment, whether on my channel or others and it's all about I can't do this I don't have the money I'm trying to save up the money I'm trying to get to the point to where I can blah 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 okay I don't want to put you down if that's you okay but I do want to say you're thinking wrong you have to stop thinking about I can't you know the old saying whether you think you can or think you can't you're right okay this is America. At least it's still America for a while. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting a new way to make money. If you are broke in America, and I'm sorry if this hurts people's feelings, it's a choice. You have to commit yourself to failing in America. You know, people come here from all over the world. <clears throat> they come over here, and they're immigrants, and with, with, they can't speak the language. Within two or three years, they are doing extremely well. You know why? Because they've come from a place to where nobody's trying to kill them. Uh, they don't have to worry about mom or dad disappearing in the middle of the night. Uh, they don't have to worry about trying, and some, trying to find something to eat or drink. And they come over to the United States, and you say, Whoa, you kidding me? I can, I can go out and work, and I can do whatever I want. And I can build however much I, I, I've got the energy and the smarts to do. And so, yeah. And these people uh, get out there and get it done. There, there is, there are other things, and, and I know I always get, you know, the person that says, and I want to put this gently, if I can. Just because I don't mention God in every uh, video, you know, uh, God is first. It's first with me. Uh, it should be first with everyone. 
But, you know, when I'm talking about what it takes to put uh, together what you would need to live well, uh, you know, there, there's no reason to come on and say, no matter what you do without God, uh, it's not going to work. We all, well, those of us who are believers know that, okay? So if, if that's your the way you choose to do your testimony, all right, but don't think that most of us here don't understand that. <clears throat> too many people, however, who take that, and I have found this to be true, too many people who, who fall back on that position aren't doing anything else, okay? So trust in God, but then go out and work your butt off. Get something done for crying out loud, because there is nothing that's going to help you more in getting prepared and weathering the tough times than having money. I'm sorry, it's just the, the way it is, okay? Guess what? You know, money doesn't buy happiness. I tell you what, it buys your way out of a lot of worry, you know, and it lets you prepare. It lets you buy the things that are going to make your life easier, whether it's the little incidental things, whether it's the personal challenges that have come along, or whether it's the big one. <clears throat> you can do whatever you've got the energy and the smarts to get done, and you should. If you are not doing everything you can to the maximum ability you can, if you really believe, and I think a lot of people out there are just playing this preparedness game. I think that people just like to be scared, kind of like people on a roller coaster. Oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Oh no. Oh look, it feels so great that I didn't die. Okay, well, when it comes to preparedness, you better realize that it, it can be a, a serious game. It, it, it could happen. And nothing is going to prepare you more, other than belief in God and Christ, than having the money to put together a situation to see you through the hard times and that can mean land it can mean a place to live it can mean you know defense a food uh, it means all of the things this is why I wrote my books okay I didn't write my books to to talk about how some unprepared person you know uh, uh, just scrambled around trying to survive and how horrible things were there was enough of those books out there I wrote my books to really take this message, the message that I put out here, that I'm putting out today, and I put out on a lot of them. And that is, things can go surprisingly well when you are prepared. You know, that's why we say, prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. I have said, and, and on the tags of my books, if it all goes to pot, I don't want to notice. And, and I know that irritates some people. I know that people can go, how can you say that? Who do you think you are? Well, guess what? I'm a person who has prepared, and I've prepared for a long time. And I've prepared so that when things do go south, my life will change as little as possible. Now, I'm not trying to act like I'm such a big deal. You know, I know people say, that sounds arrogant. I don't think it sounds arrogant. I think it sounds prepared. And you can be as prepared as I and other people who are at that level of preparedness. It's just a matter of you deciding whether you want to be and then putting the time and the energy and the hard work into it. If you don't want to do that, well, then you won't. Okay? <clears throat> but if you want to, you can. And I suggest you do. All of the, you know, you can learn, uh, you know, 300 different ways to make a fire, and you're not going to need 299 of them, right? Okay, you, you, can, you can study, uh, you know, squad tactics, you can practice at the, at the range all day long. Uh, guess what? When it really comes down to brass tacks, it's how well you have been able to prepare to live independent of those that myriad of interdependent systems over which you have little or no control that is the big world around you and in order to stand against that it's just a matter of being prepared you and your people and being together with like-minded folks so my real message was here and i wanted to I, I knew that when my nephew came over yesterday i said i'm gonna i'm gonna do one on this uh, because it really was. Here's a couple of a couple of kids, a couple of teenagers, who said, "Ooh, this would be so much fun, you know, to to dress up and play around and rent fests and things like that." And they're looking this year at uh, six figures. How's that? There are 
hundreds, thousands of those opportunities out there. I don't care what your personal situation is. If you can't do it, it's only because you have decided you can't do it. I say that with love. I say that with hope that maybe this will knock a couple of people off of that, you know, that rocket chair and, and say, you know what? I could be doing more and I am going to be uh, preparing myself better because the better you are prepared, not only are you going to do well or better, you're going to be able to help other people. And that's a very important part of overall preparedness, helping other people. So I think that's all I, I wanted to say here. Um, we're still down at Silver Dollar City, but like I said, any burglars that are watching this, I'm going to be back when this goes up. So go someplace else. Uh, I hope you all are having a great a day as we are. Remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. And if you've got a few minutes, you might just sit back and think, oh, what is it that I can do that I can make, sell, help somebody with, do something for, that'll make some money? Because I always tell people when they ask me how to make money, I says, if you can do what other people can't, won't, or are afraid to do, you've got a built-in business. Okay. So uh, best of luck to you. I hope you do. Uh, you all have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.